go. Okay, so welcome back everyone. This is um, the third in our series of short discussions with key members of coaching staff on our um, sixth form sports programme. And I'm delighted today to have uh, Ruth McDade and Rebecca Standing with me, who are very much involved with the um, cheerleading programme that we set up last September. Um, and we're just gonna get a little bit of an insight into how that cheerleading academy works. Um, and for any students that are interested in sort of um, taking a place on that program, I'd encourage you just to listen over the next 15 minutes or so to get a little bit of background about things. So um, first of all, thanks ever so much for both of you joining me today. And um, Ruth, do you just want to sort of start this off a little bit? Because the partnership that we've got here is with Vista Twisters. Um, and just maybe just sort of firstly discuss a little bit and just tell us a little bit about Vista Twisters as a cheerleading club. And then the second, probably the tough bit in a way, is just get a little, little bit about your background and everything and um, your involvement, your experience. Is that OK? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, so the Vista Twisters started in 2010. Um, we started with a group of just 12 girls at that time. Um, it started from an after school and a trampoline club, actually. And that was when cheerleading was becoming more and more popular in this country. Obviously, it's always been a US-based um, sport before. Um, so I then became interested in it because of the teamwork it had for especially predominantly girls and how it didn't involve a ball because most sport, girls uh, team sports are netball, hockey, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Or you've got the individual girls sports like dancing, trampoline and gymnastics, etc. So I really liked the vision that it kind of created for girls and to give them a purpose. Um, so we then started training in 2010, competed for the first time in January 2011, where we came away with a fourth place, which obviously at that time was amazing because it was still quite new. Um, fast forward uh, 10 years, we obviously, prior to the COVID uh, shutdown, we then moved into our own premises in December 2019. And we have a purpose-built 13 panel sprung cheerleading gym with a separate dance studio, changing rooms, et cetera, et cetera, which obviously has been amazing for us because we were competing at this time by 2018, we were competing with the best teams and the best clubs in the country. And we were based at then at the old Dover Ledger Center. So we kind of outgrew our space because we then went from 12 girls to 24. We then doubled our numbers in four years. So by 2016, we then had over 50. And in 2019, we were at 180. So we kind of grew in a very small amount of time. We then started running a lot of satellite clubs in schools. Um, but again, there was nothing in further education for girls especially obviously we do also have we're quite lucky we have quite a lot of boys as well in our program but um girls there was nothing to then for them to take further hence obviously the partnership with Canterbury Academy has been absolutely brilliant um and our penultimate or the top of our actual achievements was in 2019 we won our first cheerleading world championship bid which meant we qualify to compete in Florida in April 2020 at the World Championships. Obviously, COVID-19 restrictions meant that that didn't happen. Our qualifying bid was rolled over to 2021. So we are hoping that we will be going this April, but probably will not happen. Hopefully, maybe that will be pushed back another year or the dates may be changed. I'm not sure. So basically a 10 year story goes from a club of 12 kids, mainly girls, to now a club of over 200 boys and girls. With some of our boys now being 29 years old and still competing at the highest level. So we've made the grow, we've made the succession really, and we've grown from grassroots to now grassroots plus elite level athletes who train 16, 17 hours a week. Um, we're obviously keeping that going throughout lockdown. So that's been uh, good for them, but also obviously quite challenging. Um, so basically we yeah, have age ranges now between four 
and I think our oldest is 31. So we cover a broad range of uh, ages plus abilities because we have obviously cheerleading is a team sport which you need everybody. <clears throat> uh, I personally got into cheer from coaching gymnastics and trampolining for a long time and was getting a little bit bored of just one person competing and one person you know taking on those competitive opportunities I, I wanted to do something different so obviously I've then grown as well personally because we're now at the top level of world championship standards so I've obviously had to then improve my knowledge and grow with them but we've had the same group of 22 who are on our world team we've had them since the beginning so they are our team basically that started 10 years ago and are now competing hopefully one day <laughs> at the world championships <laughs> and that's um i mean that's brilliant that, that that story and that journey is 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 extremely impressive and everything and um i think that's one of the reasons that we decided to sort of um you know work with you guys and everything and what you're doing over there is it, it, an incredible achievement uh, Re rebecca if i just sort of bring you in now because you, you've obviously got a full-time role within the school so if you're able to elaborate on that a little bit but then could you also just maybe just go into detail a little bit about your involvement with the cheerleading academy yeah so i've been at the Canterbury academy now for seven years um and my current role is director of teaching and learning for pe so I oversee the uh, Key Stage 3, 4 and 5 academic pathways. Um, and when I started in the role, I was really keen to try and develop girls sport, particularly within the sixth form. And we had a really good base for um, cheerleading lower down the school, particularly with Key Stage 3. We got Ruth on board very early on um, with Vista Twisters. Um, we knew we wanted to work with them. And they've really helped to sort of drive participation um, in year seven, eight and nine. And we've entered a lot of the Kent School Games competitions and it's continuing to grow. And I think from that, I was really keen that they had a pathway so that they could stay on at school in sixth form and they had a sport that they could then continue until they leave their academic studies. Um, so when Ruth and I met and uh, discussed how this sixth form programme would, would look, we were really keen that it was a balance of academic studies, but also getting everything that we could possibly offer with cheerleading, um, including fitness, we do uh, stretch and flexibility workshops. Um, and then obviously the girls are really fortunate that they now get to go over and train at some outstanding facilities at the base. So yeah, it's, it's kind of growing and we're really keen for it to develop as it, as it progresses. And at the moment, we've got quite an international squad. So we've got students from all over the world currently which is really exciting. Um, and again, we've got students from all um, backgrounds and abilities. So some of them have come from cheerleading. They've done it since they were really young. Um, some of the girls, they're completely new to the sport and, and they were really keen to sort of get involved. So like we've said, you know, it caters for everyone. And I think, I think that's where I want to go with the next question. I mean, thanks for that. Is, is coming back to Roof really and thinking the way the programme works at the moment, there's a, there's a session on the Mondays down in Dover and everything. Could you just sort of outline, I suppose, firstly, what, what will the really experienced um, cheerleaders get? So in other words, how, how will they be challenged on Mondays? And then equally, if, um, if you haven't ever given cheerleading a go, but maybe you've got a little bit of a gymnastics or a trampolining background, how do you then cater for those particular students as well? Mm, yeah, good question. Um, well, we are quite fortunate with our gym because we have a lot of equipment and obviously a lot of space. So currently on the programme, there are two uh, athletes who have been with us for a very long time, so which are now studying at, your, at the sixth form and doing both. So uh, one of them is on our junior top level team. So, that, so she is actually a high level athlete herself. She uses the, the time that she is at the base to work on new skills. So if you think if you're training on a normal cheer day, which isn't at school and you're with us, you are focusing on specific elements of your routine. So you may not have the time to further develop your skills or work on higher level uh, achievements because you're so focused on routine, routine, routine and competition, competition. So it's brilliant for those girls who are already cheerleaders because they get the opportunity to work on new, new things, things that 
in normal times I might be saying no you can't try that because we've got to do this we've got to do that because you know what it's like you're kind of restricted on time ordinarily so it's a real bonus for them to get extra gym time to work on things that they personally want to achieve and things that they you know ambitions that they've got potentially um and then for the new cheerleaders or new athletes um it's really good insight into what you can achieve you know because even if you are older and never never tumbled before you don't need to tumble necessarily to be a good cheerleader uh the stunting the jumping the dance that we do at the gym is obviously in an environment that you don't necessarily have at school you don't necessarily have those facilities um so with the equipment and I always say you're never too old to learn. So with air tracks and tumble floors and all the aids that we have is a prime time for anybody to actually get in there and think, okay, I've always wanted some, some of the students now, actually, they've said um, they've always wanted to do X, Y, Z. And it's obviously taken them a bit longer because they've never done it before, but they're actually progressing, progressing. Um, which obviously is brilliant for them, um, but it's not all tumbling, you know, uh, a lot of cheerleading is tumbling, it's jumps, it's dance, and main element is stunting, and anyone can learn to stunt. Brilliant. Sounds good. I mean, it sounds like a real variety as well, and, and well done for sort of catering through all the levels like you do there. That's that's a real sort of skill for a coach to be able to do that. And, and coming back to you, Rebecca, on this one, I suppose, you know, the way that Ruth des described almost some of the things that the, the cheerleaders will be doing, that then has an impact for you in terms of working with them on their fitness and, and being, I suppose, quite specific about certain things. So can you just give, you know, a little bit of a, describe the type of work that you've been doing with, with the girls on the program this year, but also what the, what the work that maybe new students would expect in September if they were to join? Yeah, so we're really fortunate, obviously, that we've got access to Lifestyle Fitness Gym. And um, so they, in those um, sessions that they get, uh, Ruth will tell you, but everything is legs, legs, legs when it comes to uh, stunting so um, we'll write them a program at the start of the term and we'll obviously try to talk with the girls and show them progression throughout that program and then we're really fortunate as well to have um, Gemma Edwards who um, is a, a dance coach as well and she leads the um, stretch and flexibility program um, and again she brings another element to this um, which is quite unique I think in what we're offering um, but yeah they will they will get two hours at the base two hours fitness and then two hours stretch and flexibility and it's very much tailored to their individual needs and as part of that they also get access to um, the physio Mark Dason so they'll get screening at the start of the program and then that will be monitored throughout he will give us a report so that we can base our um, fitness programs according to where he thinks they might need to have a little bit of extra work um, and it just makes it really bespoke and unique for each individual. And, and if, if I, Rebecca, I'll finish with you now, and then I'll come back to Ruth. So final one for you, Rebecca. It's it's quite a big upheaval, isn't it, for a, a student to leave the school that they've done their GCSEs and gone from year seven through to year 11 to then suddenly think about going into a new sixth form. You know, in your opinion, having sort of worked um, at the Canterbury Academy for, for so long now, what you know, what, why should a student consider it? I think any student coming to the Canterbury Academy to do sport is very fortunate. We have so many facilities on site. We have so many coaches with years of expertise and knowledge in their own individual areas. If, if one coach can't help, another coach will always be able to come and support. Um, and I think it's that network that we've created with all of the different sports academies, um, yeah, that makes it very unique. Um, the coaches will go out of their way to provide time to each individual student. And again, that's backed up with the academic staff. Um, and within each academy, there's always a support network. So every student, whether they've come from an external recruit or, or they have followed through from year seven all the way through up to the sixth form, um, there are members of the sixth form team and the sports team that are all on hand to support them with that journey. So, yeah, I mean, anyone looking to do it, I just think it's such a an individual unique program that yeah they would be very well supported throughout brilliant 
Thanks very much. Good stuff. So, um, yeah, just coming back to you finally, Ruth, then, I suppose, you know, as, as a head coach, head coach of a programme, where where do you see it going? You know, what what for you? Where could this programme go in the next 18 months? Well, uh, um, to be honest, I don't actually know of any other uh, academy who that offer cheerleading in the country and I have said to Rebecca before about this that um, I have tried to do some research into it but I think we're leading the way in what we're offering uh, sixth form students and how we're changing the world is changing so how we're changing our offer to suit everyone because not everybody wants to do football academies and not everybody wants to do dance academies so we are offering something which I feel is unique and also so forward thinking. Um, I think the offer which you guys and we provide as a collective, I think is excellent. And I think there were opportunities for young people to move to Canterbury, I, I think is without doubt, one of the best things that they could probably do if they are interested in <clears throat> sport and obviously further education I think it's a win-win situation and I can see in the future obviously post-COVID-19 uh, competitions being a regular um, outlet for students um, obviously that's why you want to train in a sport you want to compete you want to be the best I think the skill level further as time goes on will improve and I think really it's um, leading the way in the country, to be honest. And I think we should be uh, really proud of what, you know, you guys especially have achieved. And I think all students will look back on this time or look to the future and think that's something that they want to be part of. That's great. And that, that's really good. And, and thanks ever so much, both of you, for sort of contributing today and, and helping us out here by doing this for us. If anyone needs more information on the cheerleading programme or any of our other sixth form um, sport programmes, please get in touch. Uh, look at the website, Camp Academy's website. There's a, a section devoted to sixth form. There's also a section devoted to um, the sports programmes as well. And, and also some of the academic options. You can't just come to do cheerleading. You're going to have to do some um, subjects as well. But we have a real range of flexible options for you. And um, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.